Hello, Fred. Welcome, Carm Capriato here with the Town Hall Academy on the value of a strong banking relationship. Do you value the relationship you have with your bank and or banker? Well, that's great. But stick around and maybe even learn one new thing from our panel. And if you don't have a strong banking relationship, you'll learn a lot about why and how. A banker is one of your strongest advisors in your business. Hey, I've got more to say on this, but I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Shopware. Hey, Shopware wants to remind you to stop spending time chasing customers. Shopware's leading shop management system is helping shops like yours generate more profit per ticket with less time on the phone. Break away from your legacy system and implement a completely contactless workflow today. Hey, get started at GetShopware.com. Thank you, Carolyn and team. Okay, now for years, your peers and my podcast have talked about the power of a CPA, business coach, insurance agent, and implementing all the newest tech advancements for the good of your business and customer. Your banking relationship is right there, right up there in the top three important advisors you need to have on your advisory board. This is the episode that puts a nice bow on why and how your banker can help your business. Hey, friend, it's Carm Capriato, the aftermarket podcast guy, the founder and host of Remarkable Results Radio and the Town Hall Academy, and now co-host with Tom Hamm of Aftermarket Weekly, the aftermarket's only live weekly talk show. Watch live on Tuesdays at noon Eastern on my Facebook page or catch every episode at aftermarketweekly.com. Hey, let's talk banking. The best thing we did, and, I, and it kind of goes off of something Denise talked about earlier about what she expects from a client. I think trust has to be at the top of the, the list. Hey, I hope you continue to be safe from COVID-19 and you are doing all you can to keep your customers and teams safe. Now, as the economy opens, things will change again. And I believe we have a huge opportunity on the horizon as people will likely use their vehicles to hit the road. You must help make those vehicles roadworthy. And that's where I see a lot of upside in the next six months. Friends say their business is on fire. And we were one of the lucky industries that could remain open. And now you can embrace more and more people who are expressing their pent-up need for a restaurant meal and to drive to a park or the beach. It's nice to know that we are their safe and reliable transportation partner. I got my first haircut in three months, and I feel lighter. So as some of the new normal comes your way, please include the podcast in your routine like it was before. We've not stopped producing very timely and important content to move you and your business to new levels. Find the key talking points that will make for a great meeting agenda on banking at remarkableresults.biz slash A175. Also, do me a favor. Please take a short four-minute survey to help me help you. Go to remarkableresults.biz slash survey or find the link to the survey on my homepage. Hey, stay strong and safe. Hey, we're live. When the big red button on Zoom comes up and it says that we're live, that means we are live. And it's 12 noon East Coast time. Carm Capriato, the Town Hall Academy, our 175th week of this. And we see uh, no end in sight. There's so much to talk about, so many discussions to have. Uh, Town Hall Academy is the original single subject form that we take a an idea, a concept. We tear it apart. We bring on some... Uh, people who have a passion to talk about this, and uh, it's the place where the perpetual aftermarket student comes for a whole bunch of great learning stuff. Well, today we're here to talk about the value of a strong banking relationship. We've been talking about having a strong banking relationship, an accountant's relationship, a business coach's relationship, a good attorney on staff, and all of a sudden, COVID hits, and what do you think? The proof of concept is that all of this stuff has value to the success and the survival of the businessman. So with me is Denise Guyton-Boyer, Senior Vice President, Commercial Lending, FCB Bank. I imagine, is that what, F, just FCB? It was Frederick County Bank. Uh, we were a Denova Bank. We were in existence for uh, 18 years, and then we were recently acquired in January by ACMB Bank, which is Adams County National Bank out of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania still a community bank. That seems to be the key. Every time we seem to talk about anything that has to do with financial stuff, Denise, the community banks are, are, uh, are where we're to go. Mark Roberts is also with us, shop owner from Shirts Automotive and a bank board member from Shirts Bank and Trust. Yes, that's correct. And we're a small community bank. 
six locations, different communities in this area. Mark, you call me up about two months ago and you say, hey, I got this idea I'm driving around. And he says, we, we need to do a show on banking relationships. And I'm on the board and I wanted to get a note and they wouldn't give it. To, it was really such an interesting conversation. And I said, wow, why don't we do a, a show? And, you know, the whole proof of concept and, and why a strong banking relationship is important. And thank you for being here and for the great idea, Mark. I'm sure you'll share some of those things. And then Dwayne Myers is with us uh, always. He's a phenomenal contributor. Both Mark and Dwayne have always been from Dynamic Automotive Four Store Operation Frederick, Maryland. Denise is your banker, so you got to say everything right here today. Am I right? Well, she's my friend first. And uh, yes, she, she, she is my partner, partner banker. What a way to start out. My banker is my friend. Years ago, when I, you know, when I was in business, my, our banker was our friend to the point where our banker ended up getting me a mortgage on my second house and allowed me to keep my duplex and get both rents from it, even though his bank said that I couldn't do that. And now this is going back maybe 30 some years, but he was so kind to... I don't know, help me in any way that he possibly could to maybe stretch <laughs> whatever the rules were to make it happen. And, and let me only say this, if it wasn't for my our, our family relationship with this person, it wouldn't have happened. And why I know it? Because I went into other banks and asked and they told me no. And, and so don't ask me why I, I went to some other place. But uh, So we're here to talk about the quality of a banking relationship. Dwayne, I really want to start with you. It's all about the relationship uh, with your banker, just no, and no different than the relationships you have with your customers. It is. I, I look at we're all relationship based with our customers, and I think what a lot of shops and shop owners miss is the fact that we need to have those also with our vendors, with our bankers, CPAs. We need those tight connections. You know, we value so much our community base. You know, and, and how we help the community, but we, we got to look back the other way too at the people that help us. Uh, you know, we're their customers. You know, we need to give them the same uh, attention that we give our own customers. And by doing that, it builds that relationship. But it's important to get you through tough times because they do happen. We all know that. Mark, you told me, you know, it's not sometimes too bad to have a couple of banking relationships possible. Yeah, I, I think it's helpful to have multiple. I mean, I wouldn't say, you know, a whole bunch of them, but at least two. And at the end, you know, I've used the same banker for 20 years, and he is he is my friend first. A number of years ago, I was looking at doing some other stuff, and, and my banker's 78 years old, okay? And I always tell him, you know, it's the bus test, you know, that we talk about. I said, you know, Louis, I said, if you get hit by a bus tomorrow, there's nobody else in the bank that really knows my business and understands it like you do. Who's, who's going to be your replacement? You know, I tease them. You're getting you're getting up there in age, and you're you know may retire or something like that. And so I had another local banker that's been in this area for a long time. I would send him all my financials, tax returns, quarterlies, everything. Just you know, I told him, hey, I want you to be in the loop, you know, of what's going on in my business because at some point one day, you know, I may need you, and I want you to understand our business, you know, from front to back. And so today. I'm actually using him for some stuff. And part of that came because of, and Denise probably knows as well aware of this, of rego issues of being a director at a bank. And there's just certain things that, you know, they they can't do. They can make sure that I'm not getting preferential treatment. And so sometimes I, I know I don't get preferential treatment. I think I get, I won't even say bad treatment, but not the best on stuff. And so I, I went out and made this other relationship. And a lot of that, came from that phone call when I talked to you because originally when the PPE loans were coming out, a director could not get a loan from their from their bank. And so that's that's what started some of it. And then then they came back later and changed that ruling where you could and it was all regulation O. So but I do think it's important to have not just one. There there are two. Our community used to have two banks. That was it. We probably have 17 now. All 17 of them have courted me. I can tell you that. But out of those 17, there's probably only two of those individuals, which were with the original community banks, that are still in this area. The other ones have gone on to different branches or different positions. 
Um, but it really comes down to I have two very good relationships with the bankers and stuff. And uh, so it's been good to have. Do I dare say the word corporate? And I don't really want to put anybody in a box, but it seems having talked to Mark, you know, the bigger the bank, the more corporate it is, the less the relationship exists. Do you see that, Denise? Well, as far as the bank that I'm with now who acquired us, they are a community bank. They're a larger community bank. Frederick County Bank was a half a half a million and uh, 500 million in size. This is a, a $2 billion bank, but it goes back to the philosophies and their strategic mission, which is to serve the community. So at this time, you know, I can comfortably and confidently say that the size of asset size of our bank is really right in play with all of my business clients. Um, it actually has opened up opportunities in the fact that the legal lending limit has increased because every bank has a legal lending limit. And uh, to speak to what Mark was talking about, I mean, smaller community banks, they only have uh, excess funds that they can lend in aggregate to any one relationship. Our legal lending limit has increased and it also allows me to be able to lend internally without going to participations outside resources to help uh, to fund transactions. Denise, I want to stay with you on this next thought that I have about the value that the relationship you have with your clients as COVID hit and they were, what do I do next? PPP, uh, credit lines. Explain to the audience, because we want this to be the kind of episode that people will look back at and say, uh, I'm just starting a business. What's important? Oh, one of them will be a banking relationship. And no matter what happens in the future, how important is it uh, because of the crisis? Well, relationship is everything. You know, you never want your banking relationship to be transactional. It's not a one-stop shop. You want to have a relationship with not only your commercial lender, but with your branch team because your commercial lender services loans, the branch side services your deposits. So you want to have people that you're comfortable and confident to know that you can call them any day and they're going to answer the phone and they're going to talk to you. So you're not going to get 800 numbers and get pushed around from department to department. Reciprocal relationships are key. They are vitally important. You want a banker that you have that relationship with. Um, just as Mark said, you know, you're know you providing them with the annual financials. You also want to keep in touch with your banker. That's what relationship is. The good times, the bad times, because it allows your banker then to be able to respond quickly to your needs, hence the PPP program. Our bank in particular, we looked at every application that came across our desk, okay? I looked at every application. I handheld it to make sure that they were funneled properly and uploaded into the ETRAN system at the SBA so that when they got there, they weren't kind of like discarded because it was missing information, which happened to be the case. You know, cases like this with, with um, the COVID-19, the PPP applications, I can confidently say, and I think Dwayne can speak to this, is that transaction was pretty seamless. The turnaround time to receive their funding was pretty quick. It's as easy as one, two, three. Shopware's shop management system allows customers to review, approve, and pay for repairs all in one place. Now, one, your customer views their outstanding balance. Number two, they are prompted to submit payment directly through their invoice. And three, Shopware Secure Portal facilitates payments right there without having to open another browser or remember another password. It's really that simple. Shopware is your complete solution for contactless service. Let remote pay work for you and improve your customer experience. Get started today. Visit GetShopware.com for more information and to request a demo. Denise said reciprocal relationship. So that's a two-way. From your client, what are you expecting? Just as I said, you know, no one likes to take the time to provide 
their tax returns or financial statements, and, and especially that naughty little form called the personal financial statement that does take some time to complete. No one likes to do it, but it is so vitally important that you provide your banker with all of this information because it doesn't get shelved. It gets used. It gets access. Let's break this down to, uh, to, our, to our audience. The personal financial statement is necessary. It's got to be there. Is it because you want to have personal collateral or do you just want to find out the solidness of me? Why? Why? Okay. Well, pretty much anymore today, it's un- unheard of that you would obtain a commercial loan and not be asked to personally guarantee that loan. And as a guarantor, you know, you're standing behind your business, you're standing behind the loan that if the business fails to make the payments, you individually will make those payments. So the personal financial statement is key to know what your assets and liabilities are. It also allows banks to pull credit reports. I've been in banking for 37 years. And the one thing that I pretty much have been able to tell in my history is that I'm going to say 95% of the time, the way a business conducts their personal finances is going to transcend into how they conduct business and how they handle their finances of their business. Pretty compatible there. Makes a lot of sense. I got that and I appreciate that. Now, let, let us do a little role play here, a little scenario. This wasn't on our talking points, everyone, but Denise, you're really motivating me to think this deep here. So I'm a new client of the banks. You know, I've got a checking account there and I come in, knock on the door. You're on the platform. I walk in and says, hi, my name is Carm. I'd love to start a banking relationship with you. Okay. I'm, I'm telling people what they need to be doing. You are going to welcome me and get me a cup of coffee. And then you're going to ask for stuff. What do I need to provide you to start? Tell me a little bit about your business. Okay. If it's a startup business, you know, I, I need to know all the ins and outs of your business. Tell me what's going on. What is your objective? I mean, what type of loan are you applying for? Sometimes people are very well formed. They know what they want. And then other people just like can't figure out the dollar amount they need. It's important to understand. I tell them that you're going to need three years of your business tax returns three years of your individual personal tax returns in this personal financial statement. We may need a debt schedule that's going to say what um, all of your all your business debt, uh, what the monthly payments are, the outstanding principal balance, and the purpose of the loan. Loan purpose, a vehicle, building, credit line. Right, right. What the purpose of the loan is. Always banks any, are going to want collateral. So it's pretty easy if you're getting a vehicle loan, a piece of equipment, that's going to be the collateral real estate. Oftentimes, businesses need lines of credit, depending on the health of the business and the longevity of that business. Banks may secure the loan with uh, a lien on the business assets, which for most banks, that is approved as if it were unsecured. Because when you go back, if, if the business fails and you go back and you try to you know, collect on those assets, I mean, it's pennies on the dollar it's, and it's expensive. So from that point, the, the, the borrower you know, will provide the information that is uh, requested. And then you know, basically the, the commercial loan officer will do their um, analysis and come back to them with options. Now, often the loan could be a startup loan. So the, most banks are going to want to look to the Small Business Administration for a, a guaranteed back loan. They're very good loans. They do take a lot of effort and time, though. The application process it is tedious. But at the end of the day, if a person does not have cash to put into the deal, a lot of cash, or they don't have collateral, the SBA loans are a wonderful tool. Through the SBA, you are le- you are required to have at least ten percent cash in. Cash, interesting. Hmm. Look at that bank account. There's nothing in it. Don't go and try to get a loan, then, right? Well, cash is king. You know, cash is king. See, so I can't get money unless I have money. I can't get money unless I have some equity. You got to have something. You yeah. got to have something. And there's so many people starting in business today that put up their four hundred one ks and the mom and dad loans to start and you know a couple of years down the road they want to do something and they realize that they haven't structurized the business enough 
financial statements aren't what they should be. There's no business plan. They haven't saved. And so do you ever help an individual get on the right track so that they can have a good banking relationship? That's where it's key from the very beginning. It's absolutely crucial that you have a banker that is willing to take the time to mentor you. They don't know all the banking guidelines. They're not expected to know, but that's the banker's responsibility to work with that client hand in hand to help them to know what the bank expects, to put them in that SBA loan, if that's what we're talking about, and and to meet with them on a regular basis collect the financials and you know it's it's relationship oriented you keep one another informed of what's happening what i like that she said Dwayne and mark is if you didn't find the financial strength then the sba is a great option either of you guys done sba ever i i can tell you i just looked at the sba for my new for my new shop and stuff um there's a 504 program you know when i looked at the fees for it and then when I looked at the, you know, what I say the blended rate is between what the bank was given and what the SBA was doing, um, I just didn't think it was it was a good deal for me, and so I I went with another option. Um, it just it was just too expensive, I thought, and it's still not a fixed rate. You know, yeah, they'll go out twenty five years. I, that doesn't didn't really wasn't that big. I have cash to put into it to do conventional, so I wasn't wasn't too worried about that. So. I actually went with a credit union, which bankers hate. <laughs> I don't hate credit unions. They, 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 most bankers don't like them because they don't pay taxes. And so I had a very good offer from a, a local credit union that was a fixed rate, a very, very attractive. And even my banker said, you got to do that. You, you need to go do that. That's, you know, because you have the money to put in the deal. So that's a good deal. Part of me being on that board now is I do sit on loan committee. I have learned so much in the last year. And I've only been doing this for a year. But part of that, I've learned so much on the loan committee is that personal financial statements. So we get a report each week of what who hasn't turned in financial statements, who hasn't turned in tax returns and personal financial statements is always an issue. And I, I look at these statements that come in of people that have, you know, lots of entities. I've seen some very, very neat financial statements, but I've also seen some that look like a six year old filled them out. And it's like, how do they run their business? If, if that's how they're doing their financial statements. But I think Denise made a very good point. When you look at their personal financial statement and you look at their business, there's a direct correlation between, between those two because it's typically those are the ones that need the most help um, or their business isn't doing as well as, as maybe it should. And so, and then going back on the relationship, my banker, we have a very good relationship. I, I spend quite a bit of time with him. And it was probably after about six years that I used him, he actually put my name out there for another company to be a director, but just because he said, you know, your stuff is so clean and neat and orderly. Everything's timely. Your financial statements are good. You always have everything turned in on time. He actually put my name out there for another organization. And so just through that banker, I mean, I sit on the board of probably five other entities that we look at and and you know one of them is is well over 500 million dollars in assets 400 employees and and it's been he's been very beneficial very helpful to do that and i first i told him no told him no three times and he came back and said well you if i didn't think it was good for you i wouldn't be asking you to do this and so i went i got nominated to be on their board and uh, i've learned a lot through that, learned a lot through just my year of being on the board at the bank. And that was because of that relationship also. So they are important and uh, they are very helpful. Thanks for that, Mark. Dwayne, would you mind sharing uh, the things that you have done with uh, your community bank to grow dynamic? I want to say probably the best thing we did, and, I, and it kind of goes off of something Denise talked about earlier about what she expects from a client. I think trust has to be at the top of the, the list. I have to, to give her truthful information, good or bad. You know, if it's a bad month, a bad year, something's not good, I have to be able to give her that information. And she has to trust that what I'm telling her is true. And when we have that trust, we can do anything together and we can build on that. And that's what builds the relationship. Something that the bank actually did, I was looking it up while you were all talking. Last year, 
we did a big video. Um, they did a big video, I should say, of us. It was amazing. The poster, and they used a local company to, cr- to create a video that, that showed our partnership, which I want to share with you once we get done. I'm going to put it up there and how we work together to help each other and help the community. Over the years, you know, we grew our relationship. You know, we came to her. And if you watch, listen to episode two, three, and four, Denise was our savior that we went to when we, when we left big corporate bank, when things went bad, you know, and, and, and uh, we won't get into that because it's too long, but uh, episode two, three, and four. On the Remarkable Results Radio podcast, episode two, three, and four. Now, just to let everyone know that we're at episode 500. Uh, and 42 right now. So way back five years ago when Dwayne and his partners came on in episode two, three, and four and told this incredible story, that's what Dwayne is referencing. And it was it, obviously Denise that was a component to all that back then? Yes, she was. Yeah. At that time, we looked at it like, you know, she saved us. She gave us a second chance at life. And then we built from that. You know, she helped us. She schooled us, you know. Not that our financials were, were wrong, they just didn't look good, you know, and she, and she helped, helped us, you know, gave us ideas, things to do. They didn't look good from the format or the health of the company? Health of the company. But she saw something in there that I, I mean, I looked at them and she said, there's hope. And I'm still looking at them like, man, she sees something and she was right. You know, we, we dug our way out of that hole, you know, and, and have gone back to her because we've expanded, you know, we've expanded out of the location. We went back to her again. Two years ago, and worked on their, a new location that we, uh, we from our first location, we, we built a big brand new building that's doing actually really good right now. Uh, she was our banker that put all that together. We, we didn't do an SBA, but she looked at that every time. Like, this is the best option for you. And, and SBA wasn't it. But we built that and built a relationship with her, but with the branches, you know, from the president down, you know, we go to their functions. They have an event. We're part of it. Uh, they sponsor stuff. We sponsor stuff. Sometimes we sponsor things together in the community. And, you know, when someone says, you know, they say, look, dynamic, they know that we are a Frederick County bank partner, uh, without a doubt. And, and that's grown. And then they just recently did this video I want to share, which was an awesome video, but it really shows how much, uh, they love the community. They love their customers and how tight our relationship has built in the last decade. If I came to you, Denise, you asked me for a business plan. How many of your customers say, I don't have a business plan? Well, first I'm going to tell you, it's surprising how many do. You know, a lot of these entrepreneurs are, are of the younger generation. They're very in tune with what they need. So it, surprisingly, it's different than what I would have told you five five to 10 years ago. You know, I always tell my, my clients, you know, they, they, you think of business plan and, and they kind of get overwhelmed. You know, you just break it down into segments. It doesn't have to be a book. It needs to be clear and concise information. Tell me about your business. Tell me about you. Tell me about your experience in this industry. Tell me how you're going to market it. Uh, tell me about your competition. Yes, you do need to do some cash flow, cash flow projections, cash flow projections for three to five years out. It's telling your banker that. You have given this a lot of thought and often, you know, it's recommended sit down and work with your accountant. Your accountant, as you said, is a part of your business family. So your accountant should be, have part of helping you to do your business plan when it comes to your projections. So it it is key. It's an instrumental thing that we, we want. We also want to see your business mission statement. Tell us what your mission statement is. How does it connect you with your community and your customers or your clients? All very important. Good finances, Mark, financial statements, cash position, banking relationships, the right accountant in the the accounting firm that, that helps you with good numbers. There's nowhere you can't go. I would say that's correct. You know, you put all those together and you're like, you're an ideal customer for a bank. You know, we don't have to talk for an hour on the importance of a business relationship because I will say this, I think you've nailed this so far. There's a question that came up about a great relationship with a biz, a branch manager. How important is that? I think it's very important because your branch manager, as I said, is going to, they house your deposits. 
new accounts, new deposit accounts, they're going to implement those. When you have issues or you have a need, may not be an issue, but you have a need, you want to know that you can, not just your branch manager, but also you have relationships with the other staff in the branch that you can get that information very quickly. So it's very important, very important. And, and this brings to mind, we talk about deposits, especially with local community banks, community banks in general. They use your deposits, your business deposits to lend out to other businesses and consumers into the community. Deposits are, are really very important and they are king to a, to a bank, to me, because I want all of my clients' deposits. I want them all housed with me, okay? Which leads to the other, uh, if I may, you all have businesses. You have competition. You have a lot of competition. Dwayne, I know you've got a lot of competition in Frederick. You may not always be the cheapest in town. Well, your banker may not always offer you the cheapest rates, but what are you getting in return for paying up a little bit on the rate? And I'm not talking a drastic difference. I'm just saying pay up a little bit for rate. You are also getting from that. You have this magnificent relationship with your bank, with your branch office, with your commercial lender. So there's value added there as well. Thank you. I find that so interesting. When you deposit your money in my bank, uh, I use it to do loans for other people, personal and, and businesses. And if I put in a thousand dollars and I paid out a thousand dollars out of that same checking account to pay my bills, pretty much you get my thousand dollars for maybe a few days and then I I'll pay it. But if I was a really profitable company, some of that money would stay that you could loan out, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. So if, if I'm not a super profitable company and I'm always bouncing, you can't use my money. Unfortunately, we have to charge you a non-sufficient fund fee. And, you know, that's how we make our money on these these type of nasty little fees. Isn't it amazing? Doesn't Does the bank make all their money on those crazy fees? That is a huge concentration today is on fees because I can tell you and Dwayne can answer to this. Uh, you know, our bank has always been like the lowest in town with fees. Um, and I myself am fee adverse, which here you go. Like you need a, you need a, a, a commercial loan officer that's looking at your accounts and knows when you are delinquent. Like, you know, it's an oversight. That person has the ability to waive a late fee on your loan, which with some loans, that could be a couple thousand dollars, depending on the size of your loan. And Carm, when, you, when you're talking about, you know, you spend, you put a thousand and you spend a thousand dollars, but that's still cash flow for them. You know, and that, that's money in and out. It, it's usable, tangible money, even though if it ain't going to stay long. We all know that's why businesses, you know, a lot of businesses have been in business for a while die is because they run out of cash. You know, they can be profitable. They just run out of cash. They run out of cash. They yeah. run out of cash. So, so that, that person that, that puts and takes, there's still value there. You know, there is value. There. I see. Thank you. But what else? What other client services can I look to my bank for? Well, I mean, obviously you have all of your deposit pieces. Your banker should be able to offer you money market accounts, all the traditional products on the branch side. On the lending side, you know, most businesses want lines of credit. They have... Um, Sweet products, credit cards, business credit cards, term loans, mortgages, construction loans, rehab loans. So all, all different types of loan facilities. The one thing I did want to touch on because I do forget and, I don't, and it just popped up into my mind is a lot of businesses don't want to pay tax. So that bottom line income on their tax return, they expense everything out so that it comes close to not showing any, any any profitability in the business. That is what allows us. If you want to borrow funds, you've got to show some profitability in your business. We've got to see that bottom line net income on the tax return. So you won't allow me to go in there and show you what I've been dumping in there and you won't let me normalize and send you a completely different, this is the CARM P&L? No, unfortunately. I mean, we have to go off a of state of tax returns. And I can't tell you how many, how many, many people come in like, I don't want to pay tax. I don't want to you know, expense everything. Well, there's only so many expenses that we can add back to cash flow. 
amortization, interest, expense, and depreciation. That's it. Credit lines, guys. Mark and Dwayne, uh, never before have we heard so much about it. Denise brought it up. I want to ask you guys if you each have credit lines and what you use them for. I do have a credit line with Frederick County Bank. Uh, I've used it for all different kinds of things. We bought the steel building that we just put up ahead of time before the tariffs kicked in uh, because, and we got the steel a lot cheaper. We saved about $20,000. I used my line of credit to buy it until we were able to actually get the loan and all through because we had to go through the process. So I used it for that. You know, I've used it for cash flow purposes. I've used it for payroll, but it's a short term. It's that part where it keeps you from running out of cash. What I wanted to say is, you know, line of credits right now are very important. And right before this pandemic hit, it was just starting to surface. I'm part of the Chamber of Commerce uh, on their board. And and, uh, the CEO there, Rick Weldon, he told me, he says, it's going to be bad. He says, this is what's going to happen. And he told me about the restaurants and all. And that night I talked to Lee and Jose, my two partners. The next morning I called Denise and I told her, I want to increase my line of credit. And I told her what was going on and we talked. This is what she told me. She says, Dwayne, we're here for you. We have your back and we're going to do whatever it takes. Three and a half months ago, I had those words said to me. I've been, I've been able to sleep at night. I then went and relayed that to my team and told my team, they know how close our banking relationship is, you know, because our team's worried. They, everyone's team is worried about the business, you know, and I can tell them that our bank has our back, you know, and that meant so much, you know, and we still did our due diligence, everything we had to do, put a thousand percent into it. But instead of me wasting energy on worrying, I waste, I didn't waste it. I spent it on solving the problem and taking care of our people. You know, you want to know what a benefit or service I got out of the bank. I was able to help my team and my team has been positive and great. And you know, a lot of our team, Carm, uh, they're awesome, you know, and we care about them and she cares about them. And that made such a difference getting through this pandemic and all. So when people say, why weren't you so worried? It was her right there. Well, big part of the family, uh, the business family. Uh, incredible. Mark, experience credit lines? You know what? I don't have one now. I had one for years and just didn't use it but because I've always had cash. It is something that we are going to look at with the new facility opening and also just to be able to do some other stuff. But uh, no, I had it for years and I just, I just didn't use it in the business. And so I always had... Uh, money sitting in a money market account. So, okay. you had your own credit line. You didn't need the banks. Well, I did that one time. My banker, I went in there to pay off a note, and the banker said, "You know, they had to call him over and say, what are you doing?'" I said, well, "I'm paying this note off." Said, what are you doing that for? I said, "Well, I got the money sitting over here to pay it off. I'm gonna pay myself. I'm gonna charge myself ten percent interest and pay it off." Well, I guess you could do that too. <laughs> we have some other places you could put money. So, here's a comment from Kevin Eckler. Uh, he says. I like to make deposits in person when possible just to reinforce the relationship with my branch. That is so smart. What's nice, you know, when you think about a community bank, I can go into either one of those two banks I use and I said, feel like I'm going into old Cheers bar that everybody knows your name. So, you know, that's nice. And you just don't get that in the big corporate banks. It's too much turnover. I think we served up exactly what we wanted to as far as to help the industry understand the value of a strong banking relationship. Thank you to Denise Guyton-Boyer, Senior Vice President of Commercial Lending at FCB Bank. Mark Roberts, shop owner of Shirts Automotive, Shirts Texas, board member of Shirts Board uh, Bank and Trust, and Dwayne Myers, who was so kind to drag Denise into this wonderful thing. And I am so glad you did. I I can't tell you, I, I just learned so much. This was great. Dwayne's from Dynamic Automotive, Four Stores, Frederick, Maryland, and Shop Owners. Thanks for being here on the Town Hall Academy. Everyone have a great weekend, and thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time... 